Legend of Total here, and today we've got a rating your one-man doomstack. Really what this series was all about, finally getting to Vlad the Dad. Vlad von Karstein with the Sword of Cain dominating, the uh, Armor of Destiny, the Karstein Ring, Channeling Staff, and a Potion of Toughness. So because he doesn't have Blood Drinker, I guess the Potion of Toughness will just help in, in case he takes damage a little bit too quickly. So looking at Vlad's stats, um, he's got 60% ward save. 20% physical resistance, so that means he's at 80% physical resistance, so not the cap. 45% uh, magic resistance, so yeah, he is at his magic resistance cap. And we're going up against Marathi with a fairly strong Dark Elf army, Crone Hellebron with a piece of crap Dark Elf army, and Rakath with a pretty good Dark Elf army. Alright, let's jump in here and see how he does. Now, the melee lord doomstacks, they're, like, they're okay and they win their battles, but... They're really slow at it because they don't have abilities that can kill really quickly. But Vlad has one of the best laws of magic in the game, if not the best law of magic in the game. Uh, the law of vampires, which we're able to summon units, debuff enemy units, kill them like crazy, and also heal them. I guess we don't need the potion of toughness after all. Alright, and he's also got vanguard deployment, so we can decide where we're going to deploy. I'm going to deploy at the back here. Yeah, with the one-man doomstacks, I found that probably staying close to the edge is best because when units route, they just run off the battlefield, right? So they don't have to deal with them again. All right, let's see how this goes. I am busy. It shall be so. Okay, there's Hellebron here. I teleported in front of me. Oh, I want to fight Hellebron. Come here, Hellebron. Come here. <laughs> You're going the wrong way. You're all going the wrong way. Hell is this way. How'd you go? 276 kills on that. They still don't want to hang around here. <laughs> Come back here. No, Hellebron wanted none of whatever we've got. So yeah, the channeling staff just helps us reduce the cooldown on Sword of Cain. Oh, is that Hellebron? Yep, that's Hellebron. Cool. I can't imagine this is going to take very long. If Vlad would not spend so much time on his belly. Could give her a curse of years to debuff her, but I really just don't think it's necessary. I'd much prefer dishing out damage quicker. She must have a lot of resistances herself. Yeah, a bit. A bit. Oh, yeah, because it does magic damage, right? She's like more than 50% resistant to it. I don't expect they're going to do much damage. Oh, she's pushed me a fair away from the edge now. So, Vlad's actually taken a fair bit of damage fighting Hellebron. And she doesn't have the Sword of Cain. Maybe I should have cursed a Vito. No, stand by it. Or... No, I probably should have. Get rid of these turds, I want to go finish off Hellebron. Get rid of one of their lords. She's regening, isn't she? Mm, no, she's not. She doesn't have it. That's interesting. Really? 
quickly before she dies. Before I mean before she rats, make sure she dies. So he's taking a good amount of damage from it. I guess we're getting regen just from thirsting because we don't have Oh no you don't. How much health? Oh no! <laughs> She'll probably come back though. Alright, if you guys wanted to stay still, that's fine with me. I wanna just kill you. Oh, don't move. It's not fair. Just wait a minute. And just wait for it. Wait for it. Okay, another look. Probably should have waited until that was done. Alright, where did Hellebron go? I know we didn't kill her. Did we? There she is. Well, at least she's not regenerating. So, we'll just deal with her again later. Yeah, these uh, Dark Shards here, although we're... Pretty much at our ma no, we are at our max resistance for them. They just do so much damage naturally that we should definitely try to get rid of them. Okay, I'm gonna try to pop another zombie down here, get them to crowd around it, and wind of death them. Because the the biggest problem with a one man doomstack with a spellcaster lord is that the AI just doesn't blow up around them to get good spell casts. Well, we're gonna have, just have to go for. They they're just moving right through it. That just didn't work at all. I have to try again. Uh, I know I got a better idea. So that's gonna hit. Oh, stop me from casting. There we go. That way we also hit this one here a little bit. Yeah, let's not let this blood rack try and shoot us. They're not great in melee, so we can uh, cut them down pretty quickly. Vlad would be best against uh, single entities more than uh, infantry. Save our magic for infantry units. But yeah, they don't want to stick around for what we're bringing. They're quite likely to hit their own units with that, which is fine by me. Yep, that didn't even hit me. Could use the Gaze of Nagash to try to hit Hellebron, but she's very magic resistant, so it wouldn't really do much. It'd just be a waste of magic. Just focus on the Wind of Death so we can get rid of their infantry a bit faster. I think we need to be focusing on the Dark Shards with it, because they're the most difficult sort of to get to, and they could actually do a lot of damage to us. We just need to make sure we actually get good hits. Like, that's not amazing. But then again, I do have a lot of wins, so... It doesn't matter if it's not amazing. I'm gonna hit this, uh, Black Guard of Nagarond as well. Okay, Rakath wants some of this now. We're gonna use this to try to give ourselves a bit of a extra defense boost. Well, it's a threesome, is it? Uh, actually, go for Rakath, because Marathi can regenerate, whereas Rakath can't. And also, Rakath would be hitting a lot harder. Could use Van Hel's Dance Macabre for more melee attack, but our uh, melee attack's already so high that we're probably landing every hit anyway. Okay, time for a Curse of Years. Which will also... Put some cooldown on Marathi's abilities. Rimble. 
Now, it's really important that we don't actually kill Marathi, because otherwise the Heart Render and Dark Sword debuff could be uh, put on us permanently. So, best if she just runs away. It's kind of stupid how that is, but, you know, it's not a perfect game. It's got bugs. Sometimes they're in our benefit, sometimes they're not. So Vlad so far has used up a little, just, he's teetering on halfway through his regen, which is pretty good. Most of our health was lost while fighting Hellebron. Rakath didn't do shit. And if Helle Hellebron makes her way back over here, she's going to die straight away. Yep, Marathi got out of that. Wow, she's, she's already regenerated a lot. She must be overcasting a lot of stuff and miscasting. Rakath is coming back. Negate his charge bonus with that a little bit. Come on, I want to see his health chunked. Good, about 800 health every time he gets hit. Regarth's got a lot of damage. To dish out. <laughs> they killed him with friendly fire with the dark shards. Thanks, bro. That's why he doesn't pay to be big. Let's get in a bunch of their infantry here, so I've used them as meat shields. Just wait for it, try to hit as many of them as possible. Come on, just gotta put it somewhere. That'll do. I don't think that was a particularly good one. Alright, we've got natural regen of one every 10 seconds now. Okay, here comes Hellebron again. We only need like one or two hits to get rid of her for good. Another hit should do it. There she goes. That's two for two. Two for three. No, where's uh, Marathi? She's the last one remaining. She should be easy to spot. But I can't see her. No, there she is. This world is mine. So, it's looking like Vlad can handle this pretty easily. looking like it. I mean, he's still got two-thirds of his regen left. With the Karstein Ring, uh, that certainly gets him to his uh, max resistance cap. He, he just doesn't have that active all the time. That looked like a pretty good one. Yeah, that was alright. Just waiting on a good opportunity to cast again, but I'm not seeing anything. Uh, this looks like an opportunity here. If I cast in this direction here, as long as they don't change direction, we should hit. Change direct mine, change your mine. <laughs> they change directions. Okay, Marathi's almost gone. Just looking for good opportunities to cast this. Because it can be very difficult to predict, especially if they're not just constantly moving in the same direction, which they're not doing. Might have to put a zombie down just to get them to stop. Uh, 
I'm still not seeing good opportunities, so we'll just go for a bad one. Just because we're pretty much max magic. Yeah, that looks like it's a pretty bad one. Like I said, they just weren't standing still, and the zombies aren't pinning them down long enough. And they're not even staying pinned down to deal. Okay, all, all of their lords have been defeated now. And the infantry is pretty thinned out. Alright, we are one fifth of our regen through now. Because, yeah, if I could get a perfect wind of death through there, that would do a lot of damage, but they keep changing direction right when I'm about to cast. Okay, now we just gotta hope that they don't change direction, and... Uh, it's, <laughs> it wasn't very good. That's why you gotta pin them down. You just have to pin them down. It's just so difficult to predict them when they're, when they're moving around like this. Like, we got him a little bit, but it just wasn't worth 21 wins of magic to do that. Because you want to go for, like, the big kills of Dwight out an entire unit. Which means you have to go sideways through their unit, but that's really hard to be accurate, especially if they're not standing still. It's okay if their army's in formation, marching towards you, you can predict it pretty easily, because at least they're moving... Like, consistently, but this just isn't consistent movement. Consti uh, consistency can be predicted. Inconsistency is difficult to predict. See, there might have been a decent opportunity, because we could have just gone right through them, but don't have the magic now. And it's alright with the Sword of Cain because it moves. So it can actually just, um, if you miss your initial target, you might hit something else. Alright, that dragon's done. Would have been good to kill it, but it doesn't matter. I think we've used up about half of our wins now. Which means it's going to take twice as long to regenerate our magic. Yeah, we're at least at... Yeah, we've used a little bit more than half, because at half would be one every 12 seconds. Because every time you halve your power reserve, you double your um, recharge time. So if we spent an additional 80, it would then go down to one every 24 seconds. Uh, they're pushing us. Alright, how's Vlad going for a regen? Oh, we're just about to run out. Fuck it, look at this, look at this, look at this. Now, just don't change directions. No, they're changing directions, but it's okay. That's what you want to go for. Good stuff. I'm happy with that. Yeah, we're out of regen now. Yeah, I don't think that the potion of toughness was needed. Who put that on us? So somebody, I think, I think uh, Marathi had that. We should still be at our max magic resistance. No, we've actually dropped below it. So when Marathi died, um, she applied that on us. 
No, but she would have had the Heart Renderer Dark Sword applied on us as well. Maybe it was Hellebron that had that applied. I don't know. Ah, oh, that was crap. That was just a complete waste there. If I could get to the Blood Rack Shrines, it'd be worth a lot of bounce power just so we could start wrapping this up now. Instead of fighting their crappy melee infantry. But I gotta be able to get to them. And anytime I move away from these infantry... Actually, let's give it a shot. Somebody's gonna knock us down. We'll get in our way here. We're probably going to be using more Sword of Canes now than Winds of Death. We just used up too much of our magic. Ah, chariots. They don't want to get into melee with us. But I want to get into melee with the blood rack shrines. Come on, I want to take down the blood rack shrines. Let's get through them here. There we go. Chunk it down. Alright, we've got another Wind of Death ready, but I'll wait for a good opportunity. We've already wasted a number of them. And I don't think that the uh, the zombies is really doing anything. They just die way too quickly in this situation here. Going down that line there or through here isn't too bad. Although the Blood Rack Shrines are probably shooting a lot of their own troops as well. Hang on, I'm seeing something here. That looks alright. I think that's going to kill quite a few. Yeah, we got about 100, 150 kills on that. That's about as good as we can ask for. Okay, that artillery is going to do more damage to them than, than to us, so I'd say just leave them. So at this point here, Vlad's used up about 45% of his total health pool. So he's not even really at half health. Because you got to take the regen into consideration. So his total health was 7,900, so 8,000, rounding up, plus 6,000. So he's got, what's that, 14,000 health? So he, actually, he's close to half health. Closer to, yeah, that, about 48% uh, health. Lost, that is. Killed off like nearly three quarters of them. But most of it's just melee infantry. We've killed off all the heroes. I need to get over here and kill all these blood rack shrines. They're the ones that are tying up all the balance of power now.
But Vlad being a small single entity just can't really dictate who he wants to attack. Yeah, he gets hit by that stuff and just gets knocked down. The Eastern Opportunity over here is forming. No, no. We can do better. Yeah, just have that instead. Good, got rid of those chariots. Alright, so Vlad is essentially at half health now. We've killed way more than half of their army. This battle's almost over. I just gotta inflict the final blow, essentially. Just find something worth a lot of bounce of power and kill it. Quite get it though. This might tie them down, stop, stop them from shooting for a moment. Come on. I just need an opening so I can get in there. Come on. Get through, get through. Just so they stop shooting so I can get in there and actually eat them. There we go. That, that actually kind of worked. But once again, they're trying to get away from me. So, we did a bit of damage to it, but they just they just get away. There's quite a lot of people here. But the Wind of Death, I can't get like a proper line of them. Hang on, hang on. That might be okay. Probably not going to be a lot of kills. But that's about as good as we're going to get in this situation here. Okay, got another sort of cane ready to go. So when he is almost out of ammo anyway, but still just just try to kill it. Okay, there's the army losses just sort of inflicted. Like I said, we just had to get them, just take him down a little bit just to inflict it. And look, the bounce power is not even in our favor, but we've we've dished out so much damage that the game's just adjudicating us a win. And there we go. So that's pretty much exactly what I expected Vlad to perform like. We I expected Vlad to be basically unbeatable even with a fourth army there i don't see how they could have won i mean we were only at 50 percent of our total health so the units well that being said um hellebron's army was completely useless so if they had a third army that was actually good thing is the single entities were actually while they were dishing out lots of damage to us we also dished out damage really quickly to them whereas the dread spears they just tied us down a lot so, it's really hard to say if the Dread Spears are really that bad. And if they had more Dark Shards shooting at us, well, I just would have Wind of Death them. It would have actually made it easier. So, what unit could they have possibly recruited more of to do a better job? Maybe more of the, the Cold One Dread Knights? Maybe. Um, but honestly, I don't feel like they did much damage. Yeah. Yeah. They would have needed a fourth army just to even stand a chance. And it wouldn't have mattered what unit they recruited. Vlad's got everything covered. Yeah, if they bring missile units, it's just Wind of Death them. They bring chariots, it just doesn't do much to us anyway. Uh, they bring these ones here, they just don't do much to us, and eventually we're going to melee with them and kill them really quickly. Um, yeah, maybe like a full blood rack shrine, and just stay away from him constantly, because I wouldn't be able to do any magic to them apart from... Um, Gaze of Nagash, and that wouldn't be very effective. Maybe that's the only way they could have possibly won. Just spam Bloodrack Shrines and just stayed away from me and just kept shooting me for half an hour. That's what they had to do.
I can't think of really any other way. Or maybe using Scourge Runner Chariots. That actually does a fair bit of damage. Just like a spam of them, so I couldn't get close. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's that battle one. We were the attacker in that scenario. So we're not over the end turn. We can have a look at uh, what's going on. Looks like we came here to save the High Elves to an extent. Not really, we're at war with him too. Alright, let's have a look at traits and stuff and see what he's managed to do. Let's see, instead of the Potion of Toughness, because I really don't think he needed that. I don't think that would have been of any use either. We're already at our cap. Yeah, I'd, there's really nothing that you could have used. Maybe even that one there might have been better, just because there were some flying units and it would have debuffed them. But I don't think this item here is essential. Channeling Staff was re really effective. In this situation, the longer the battle goes on, the more effective that is. Um, Armor of Destiny, yep, that's fine. The Karstein Ring, yep. I can't think of a better item to put on him there. And, yep. Alright, let's have a look at these at these stats here. Alright, so we defeated Manfred, that's useless. Defeated Azag. What about Wurzag? Ungrim, yep, that's good. Gore Drenched, yep. Yeah, he got, he got Azag, uh, Wurzag. Sora Smiter, that's good. There's Thro- Yeah, he got, like, all the usual ones. The only ones I think that would have made it a little bit better was, of course, Nakai. But Nakai is difficult to get because Nakai ends up dead a lot of the time. So he's really difficult to track down. Um, Hellebron would be good. Did we not- Did we get- We should have gotten that when we won that. Unless- we already had it. Unless he's already had his max cap for them, because you can only get, I think, 39 traits. I didn't see it in here. Yeah, because we defeated Hellebron in that battle and you didn't get it. Unless I'm blind and I can't see it. Because I'm not seeing it here. Because we also defeated um, Marathi there and we didn't get the trait. I think he's just got the maximum number of of traits. Yeah, part of the problem is that you get stuff like Lords over Druki just for beating Dark Elves loads of time. And this is actually really shit if you want to trait farm because um, this takes up a slot because you've only got a limited number of slots. And leadership plus five when fighting Dark Elves Lords Army, that's crap. Um, same with, and you can get that for every every race. So let's have a look at other things like Man's Ruin. There, he's got another one there. Um, Annihilator is pretty useless. Destroyer is, it's all right. Exterminator is useless, and you can't get rid of it. Once you've got this, you can't get rid of them. Orcsbane, that's fucking useless here. Yeah, that's the one's alright. And just stops you being able to get the, the maximum number of really good traits. But one thing that I guess you could have done was not get, um... Uh, let's see. Metal Storm's not essential. Which ones of these, like, Legendary Lord traits did you not need? Well, you didn't need Moonslaker, but imagine that you need to do that at the beginning of the campaign to sort of subjugate Manfred, so that's fair enough. Anyway. Yeah, so that was that was really good. I don't think you can get Vlad much stronger than that. I don't know how you're going to get that extra 10% physical resistance, because it looks like he does have Nagashazar. Because he had no cooldown on the abilities. That was one giveaway. So there's 5% physical resistance there. If you want to get extra magic resistance, you can get the Black Pyramid of Nat Nagash. Uh, but he was already at his magic resistance cap. That would also give you extra um, winds of magic, but you can just get that uh, by recruiting certain lords and other things. Uh, but yeah, Vlad's about as strong as you can get. So, I think Vlad is really the ideal person to get the Sword of Cain. Like I was saying before, all of these things for the vampire accounts just don't matter. Diplomatic relations, everybody hates you. Public order, public order for the vampire accounts is actually pretty good by this stage of the campaign, even if you're playing on legendary difficulty. And upkeep plus 10% for all units, like, money is not an issue for them. And that's that's why you wouldn't worry about it too much. I mean, you could just, if you really want to, just keep skeleton spamming, because that's viable throughout the campaign. And that way, that 10% just doesn't matter, because like I said, 10% of zero is still zero. And then you're just paying extra for all of your lords. And even even here, like, he's not even paying that much for Vlad. Uh, and that's with a supply line of, oh, well, you do not have many armies.
Why don't you have many armies? You got good armies, that's for sure. Lots of hero spams. What do you want? Man, at this point of the campaign, I'd have like 20 armies of skeleton spams. Which is why in my campaign I conquered by like turn 100 all of Ulthwan. I had it from Ulthwan to end the Empire and everything all the way between. But anyway, um, yeah, you need more armies. Anyway, that's the end of this one, guys. I think this is a 10 out of 10. Um, I can't really see any downsides to having Vlad be this powerful. If you want to give him skeletons to go with it, it probably would have helped to speed things up. Um, just because... Although it would actually slow down the rate at which uh, the army loss penalty would incur, because all of your skeletons would get killed, um, you'd be able to get at least a couple of good winds of death in when the enemy blobs up around them. It just would have sped things up that way, just get rid of all their infantry, and then Vlad just takes out all the single entities, which is what he's good at fighting, um, not so much the uh, melee infantry, just, uh, just drags him down. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys. Let me know what you think about uh, Vlad. I don't know if we're ever going to get anyone that's going to top as strong as Vlad, because, like... I mean, Teclas was kind of better, because he didn't even need the Sword of Cain. Um, but I can't think of any better recipient than than Vlad for a settled faction. The the Horde factions like the Beastmen and... I don't think I've had anyone send me in a Beastman Lord yet. <laughs> They're just such a shit race. Uh, the Beastmen and the Warriors of Chaos are, are definitely good with the Sword of Cain, because they have less to worry about with this one. Uh, but as far as the settled race is concerned, yes. I think Vlad's the best um, choice for it. Anyway, the, oh, actually... <laughs> Him or Malice Darkblade, although Malice Darkblade has problems with, um, with, uh, it's mainly public order for Dark Elves, that's the thing that they struggle with the most, not so much upkeep and diplomatic relations. Anyway, that's the end of this one, appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.